the one group I probably could compare uh, Cloud Dead to, um, and they're they're totally different because they don't have vocals. Is Boards of Canada? I think those are the closest kind of in the. They're different in many ways, you know. Sure. But they, the aesthetic, is has some true, like, kinship, I guess, if you will. Like, do you think is that like somewhat of a safe assumption to make? Knowing that probably now, I'm, I'm sorry to in, interrupt you again, but probably <laughs> during the time that you were making that shit, you might not have, it's not like you were listening to them. I didn't know, I didn't hear Boards of Canada until after the, the first album was finished. Right. In fact, I didn't listen to Boards, the, the first time I heard the uh, Music Has a Right to Children was when Yoni and I moved across country. We, Here. We, we had a boombox in, in the U-Haul and Adam was like, you, you should listen to this Dope. Boards of Canada. And I was like, cool, let's play it. You know, so he gave it to Yoni. We listened to it, and I remember being like, "This, wow! I, I, this resonates with me big time." Yeah. Um, because too, and I'm sure that's they heard when they heard the first Cloud Dead album. They, I'm, I'm sure they were just as intrigued as when I heard their music for the first time. Right. Now, I would love to talk about this for a second too, because if I'm not mistaken, you're one, if not the only producer that has remixed their stuff before, right? Am I wrong in assuming that? I I believe I'm the only one that they've actually reached out to and said we want you to remix right something of ours and then we'll we'll actually include it on It was originally supposed to be a 12 inch with uh the Dave Van their, their their version of Dave Van Cowboy on the A side and then my version on the B side so right. I was like fuck it I'm going to I'm going to do like a long form piece because if it's just going to be on the B side I can have the whole B side to myself. But yeah, I mean, I know that I believe that they were remixed by somebody else, uh, and I think it was probably um, Warp. Had That's different. When the label commissions yeah. someone because of their own, uh, you know, agenda, whether whether what whatever that might be, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, that's slightly different scenario. But when the artist is like, "This is the dude that we want to like, that we feel uh, can do it," especially when it's a group that has as much mystique around them as yeah. like boards of Canada and you can't get much I mean there's only a couple others that are up there with as far as like un unaccessibility as far right. as touching those guys because they just don't fuck with society and shit from what I gather you know um, yeah. I think it's pretty cool it's, it's pretty amazing they're one of the few groups that I I really admire how they've they've kept they've stayed true to their 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 vision you know and it's just yeah it's they, incredible they're they're just inc they're, they're just so, so consistent and and they're really down to earth i mean i've i've met them uh, a couple times and out here I, or I, out there probably right uh the first time i met them <clears throat> excuse me uh was in edinburgh we were touring i believe it was 2003 we were touring uh it was the mush tour uh, europe tour uh-huh and uh they came to the show. We were doing Cloud Dead Live. We were also doing a Reaching Quiet Live, which was a amazing project between uh, with uh, Yoni and I. I love that album. I want to ask you about that album too, <laughs> but uh, but please, yeah. So they came through the show. Yeah, they came to the show, and uh, 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 two of the guys from Mogwai uh, also came. The, the lead singer and the drummer, and they nice. they drank all of the alcohol that was backstage. Classic. Yeah, it was it was pretty funny actually. It was, I wasn't really drinking much back then, but. But yeah, we met Boards of Canada uh, after the show. We went to a pub, and it, it was just like hanging out with, you know, your buddies. You know, like yeah. it just it just felt very natural. And uh, they ended up. We asked them to remix Dead Dogs Two from the Cloud Dead Ten album. Yeah, <clears throat> which was huge for us. And then, um, yeah, it was uh, two thousand six when they reached out to me to do. To, to, to remix something off their album, uh, the Campfire Head Phase. I was actually in Barcelona visiting my, my mother's family, mm -hmm. and I was pretty depressed at that time. I was I wasn't happy with where music was going. I didn't know what I was doing necessarily. Like I had just re uh, released uh, the year before that uh, my album Burner. Yep. And I j I was working on what ended up becoming Level Live Wires, but I just 
there was no beat scene at the time, at least that I was aware of, and it just seemed like nobody was interested in beats. Everybody was was doing keyboard electronic shit. And, yeah, definitely. Which which is which is which is cool. If, like I mean, you know, do you? But I I I just felt like there was uh, like perhaps what I was really interested in was 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 maybe it was over. It was just played out, and nobody was really too right. looking for that kind of shit. So when Boards of Canada reached out to me and they were like, "Hey, we got a new album coming out. Listen to it." Pick any song you want, and, and we want you to remix it. So I was like, "Well, uh, I'm gonna, I want to remix Dave and Cowboy." And you know, they they told me that that would be the single, and so they they literally gave me five stems. Uh, each stem is like 20 seconds. Really? So if yeah, I mean, I I had very little. I mean, I had, I had a lot to work with, but I didn't. You know, traditionally when you when you remix. People usually give you a lot more material uh, to, to to work with, so it was. That's one of the reasons why that my, my remix is what it is. It's like it, this own beast. Yeah, you know, because I, I well, that obviously was intentional on their behalf. Probably they're like, give him this little amount and see what he can do. Right. That's exactly what because uh, Mike, um, he actually told me that he was like, I'm, I'm just going to give you a few things and I want you to just do whatever you do with this stuff, and you. are Whatever you do, we'll we'll take it. And so I did what I did. And yeah, so it's, 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 it's funny too because at the time when that remix came out, I I again I thought it was going to be a twelve inch, where I, I'd have the whole B side, and it turned out to be an EP. And I was like, oh my god, like I, th- this is this is going to be horrible. Like this, like what would be horrible? Just like that that you <laughs> if you knew it like was the gonna last be- song on their EP is going to be my remix, you know. And it, it, right. it I didn't make it with that in mind. Uh, Again, I made it with, you know, th- this would be like a vinyl only, you know, B-side exclusive. Uh, and of course, when it came out, there was, there was a decent amount of negative press. And this was back when I would actually pay attention to, you know, Pitchfork and, you know, these other websites that, right. you know, like I, I actually took that shit serious. Um, I've grown up a bit since then. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it got bad reviews. Um, consistently got bad reviews and I just felt like man I fucked up I f- fucked everything up for Boards of Canada but at the same time I was so inspired by them reaching out to me you know and, and that opportunity and, and, and that's what inspired me to finish uh, Level Live Wires and since then I've, I've been pretty much on a roll uh, we've definitely been extremely prolific since that record too yeah, I mean, there's been an album or a project of some kind, or at least, or even two at, uh, per year <clears throat> since then. It seems like. Yeah, you know, you know, for me, I, I have a lot of different interests. Um, I, I, I wish I could do what Boards of Canada does. I wish I could just we put do... a record out every ten years. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't need to explain what Boards of Canada does because I'm, right. I'm assuming that if you're listening to this, you probably know Boards of Canada pretty well. But yeah, they. I, I, I like doing all kinds of different stuff, so I'm, I'm not afraid to try different things, you know. And I, I, yeah. I, I just, I just do whatever I feel like doing. And I, I used to be, maybe back in the early to mid 2000s, a little too concerned with what I think, or at the time, what I thought people expected of me. Yeah. 